All right, we have three series here on the board that we want to try to evaluate. Um, the strategy for all of these is going to be to work with some basic properties for a series and a few known results, some of which I've mentioned previously, some of which are summarized in the textbook. We'll, we'll point them out as we go. Um, so a couple of the properties that we are going to rely on here are going to be things like if you have the series of a sum You can write that as a sum of a series. So sum of the ANs, sum of the BNs. Um, and if you have a common constant multiple, say C times AN, inside the series, you can factor it out. Okay. And the reason you can do that is that, well, for each of the partial sums, right, for a partial sum, it's just a constant multiple. You can factor it out. Um, and then the series, of course, is the limit of that sequence of partial sums. And we know that for limits, if you have a constant multiple inside the limit, you can bring it out. Um, similar arguments will work here, right? Um, we know that for finite sums, this is valid. We also know that the limit of a sum is some of the limits, and so we can, we can make that argument to get those things to work. Okay, so let's come to something like this. n going from 1 to infinity, we've got minus 1 to the n, n squared minus n over n cubed. How are we going to deal with it? Well, let's try manipulating a little bit first. So n going from 1 to infinity, let's leave that minus 1 to the n plus 1 out front. And notice that we can divide each of these individually by n, right? So n squared over n cubed is just 1 over n. n over n cubed is 1 over n squared. Okay, so we can split it up like that. So then we can write this. If we multiply that through, and we split this up into two series, we can write it like this. Minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n. Subtract sum n going from 1 to infinity. Minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n squared. Okay? Now, each of these turn out to be known results, and these are not things that you're supposed to know how to come up with or establish at this point. They're just results that somebody somewhere in the past has proved. They're given to us in the textbook as a list of known values, and so we're just going to use them. Um, this first one here is the natural log of 2. Um, I think I've got that right, the minus sign. Might be off by minus 1, but no, I think that's right. Uh, and this one here, it turns out that this one is pi squared over 12. Why? I don't know. There's some fairly sophisticated mathematics that probably goes into establishing that well beyond what we're doing in this course. But there you have it, right? You can get that answer. How about something like this? Well, we can use the constant multiple rule, and we can write it as... 1,000 times the sum, n going from 1 to infinity, of 1 over n factorial. Uh, now, one of the known results that's given to us in the book says that uh, if this sum started at 0, the sum going from 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial is actually equal to e, to Euler's number. Um, so the sum is starting at the wrong point, but that's okay. We can, we can modify that. We can say, all right, if I started the sum at 0, um, well, what does the n equals 0 term look like? The n equals 0 term is just 1 over 1 fact or 1 over 0 factorial, which is just 1, right? So by starting the sum 1 earlier, I've added 1. So I can subtract 1 to balance. Okay? And then I know that this is e, and that's, well, minus 1. Okay? So we can get that answer. Again, we will actually see later on why this is equal to e. Um, once we've done power series, Taylor series, we'll see why that's equal to e, but we're not there yet. All right, this last one. Well, what do we have? 
Uh, we have 1 over 4 squared plus 1 over 5 squared plus 1 over 6 squared, 1 over 7 squared. So we've got the sum n going from 4 to infinity of 1 over n squared. Uh, okay, well that is the same thing as the sum n going from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared if we subtract off the n equals 1 term, the n equals 2 term, and the n equals 3 term. Sorry, 3 squared is 9. All right, oops, there. I'll get it right eventually. Okay. Um, and this 1 over n squared, that's that result we've mentioned already. This is pi squared over 6. And this here, I mean, I guess if we want to get the common denominator, 36, do we really want to do it? Uh, why not? Uh, 36 minus 9, well, let's add them. 36 plus 9, 45 plus 4, 39. Oh, sorry, 49. 49 over 36 for our answer.